Okay, so we're learning Drupal 8 by trial and error. And in this lesson, we're going to take a look at what they've done with the implementation of WYSIWYG. So this is just a complete new install of Drupal 8. So this is Drupal 8 out of the box. And now Drupal 8 comes with WYSIWYG by default. There's no more need to down a WYSIWYG module than to download a third party editor and then to configure the editor and then the config. It, Drupal 8 actually just made this a heck of a lot easier. Basically, right from the get go, you install Drupal, add some content, whether it's you know our standard basic page or our article, either one, WYSIWYG is already there. We didn't even have to do anything. I installed Drupal 8 with the basic configurations and we've already have an editor in place. Drupal 8 made this so much better and so much easier. I'm really just basically showing what they've done, how much easier it is and w what it all looks like. So here you can see what's the standard toolbar for the WYSIWYG editor. What they did was they actually put CK editor in core. Let's take a look at the configuration of this to see exactly how it works now. So now basically they combined the configurations that we had before into text formats and editors. Or before in Drupal 7 when you installed it, there was a different place to do things. Now they kind of combined it all into one. And they'd started by default that the basic HTML and full HTML uses the CK editor and they gave some configuration options for that. So if we go in and configure, here's where we can kind of do some of the stuff we always did before, but they made it a lot cleaner and a lot easier to deal with. We no longer have a huge page of check boxes that we can choose buttons. They now gave us this basically active looking toolbar and available buttons that we can drag and drop and add to our toolbar. It's, it's pretty cool, better than a bunch of check boxes. So now you can customize your toolbar just like you could before. A new thing they now allow without an additional module is the ability to upload images and insert images in line. So they gave us this option. I'm gonna show you how it works. Uh, in my honest opinion, it's it's a little bit weak and I hope at some point in Drupal's you know, versioning that we get something like media module into core. But for now, it's better than nothing. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. So now that we can see how we can pretty much do everything the way we did it before, but the basics that we used to set up is now already set up once we install Drupal. And then we can f do what we want with it and add different things to our toolbars and all that with drag and drop versus a million checkboxes. So let's go ahead and let's add some content here and take a look at how the images work. Add content. Let's just go ahead and add a basic page because that doesn't have an image field. So now when you add for this image, it actually allows you to just choose your file and you, you really only have the ability to add alternate text and to size the image. Now, there's nothing built in here to do any type of logic. So this is where I kind of think it's a little bit flawed. It just basically lets you put an image in there. You can't choose an image style to apply to that image. Even if you have image style set on a, on a field, it's not gonna take that because that's set for the field. So it's really just a down and dirty way to get images into the body. And as far as I could tell, these images aren't even accessible by anything within Drupal. It'd be great if these images, you could build a view of all the images you inserted in your body field, but uh, I'm not seeing it. So I guess it works. I don't know if I would necessarily use this method unless they enhance it down the line, but if I could just go ahead and click save, the image is in my body field and now I could type around it. It's gigantic. If I double click on it, it will load the same box as if I was clicking on it. So now I could actually change its size. But so let's just say we want to make this 150. Now you would think by hitting 150 that the coordinating size would adjust appropriately. It doesn't, but when I click save, nothing, it's the same thing. So you would actually have to sit there and figure those things out. Another thing that it does do for you though is so besides being able to do the images, you get all the other functionality. We have a WYSIWYG in place. You can bold highlight attacks, italic things. You can see its source. So everything you remember is now just in core. Let's take a look at what else this gives us, which is inline editing. So in order to get this inline editing, let's just get some content in here. Let's go ahead and save and publish this. Perfect. Now when we're looking at content, and this particular one is just a basic page, our contextual menu, which is now a on hover, a little pencil basically shows up. And when you click on that, we now have a quick edit link. I'm not too sure why there's obviously a bug or something that sometimes it comes up twice, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But for now, if we click quick edit, we this pretty clever thing pops up and it basically tells me, okay, if I hover over this, this is the body. And then if I click in the body, I'm gonna get an editor. So this is how inline editing works. Even after the fact, I'm on the page, and if I wanted to, right here, I could add an image. And if I wanted to, I could take that image and I could remove it and then hit save. 
all of this done in line and all done. It's kind of a clever little addition. I, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it, especially content editors and just basically people that are using the site as an end user. So that was just a quick down and dirty trial by air look at the new WYSIWYG and inline editor.